What's going on, Northwest Arkansas? It's your boy Randy, just coming at you with a uh, another quick Facebook Live video. Decided I would post on Friday, talk a little bit about things that have been happening this week. And uh, no, I'm not going to get into politics or anything like that, but um, I am going to uh, just kind of share with you a couple of things that we're working on right now here at the podcast. I don't know if you guys had a chance to um, check out this last Monday's episode. It was episode 101 of the podcast, and uh, we got a chance to actually, actually not sit down. I took my Zoom recorder, and I walked the Fayetteville Public Library extension with David Johnson and Heather Robideau from the Fayetteville Public Library, and they were so kind to take the time to show me what this expansion means for everyone. And I gotta tell you, I was blown away by what I saw and I really wanna encourage you, hold on one second. We'll make sure my, my sound is perfect. I really wanna encourage you when you get the chance to make it down to the Fayetteville Public Library, check it out for yourself and see what David and his team have put together. There are some amazing things that these guys did with this huge expansion. Yes, they spent a lot of money. Uh, those of us that are taxpayers here in Fayetteville, well, a lot of our taxes have gone towards this, but then so many uh, people have come out and um, have given to this effort and I gotta tell you it's amazing but uh, we spent an hour and a half walking through everything the new kitchen the the new deli that they're about to open up we got to see the expansive area for uh, pre-k or just like preschool they've got um, I forget the word that they use for it but like you know your grade school kids and then your teen section just phenomenal if I had grown up with a library like what they are now what they have now built for us here in Fayetteville and beyond I I, I don't know that I would have ever left the library and I was a library kind of guy how many of you can testify to going to the library getting dropped off by your mother on Saturday uh, if you weren't playing sports or whatever and you'd spend the day there and that's where I spent the day reading and studying and listening to the uh, old uh, taped episodes of The Shadow. I don't know if anybody guys remember that, The Shadow, uh, The Shadow Knows. And uh, yeah, I'm dating myself now. Young people are watching this video like, what the heck is he talking about? Anyway, I digress. The bottom line is the facility is amazing. Um, they have done several things that are worth note that I really want you to check out the podcast and listen to. One, just a couple of the things I'm going to give away real quickly. They are have a commercial grade kitchen that's open to anyone. If you want to start a restaurant or a business and a food truck, but you want to make sure that you can cook, well, you got a commercial grade kitchen at your ready where you can actually make food and then sell it. Um, you could have a bunch of people that you want to get together and maybe you have a friend that's an amazing chef and you could take your library card and uh, rent out the kitchen for the night at no cost. Um, you just obviously have to clean it up and I'm sure there's other requirements, but it's really cool. And then the deli. David teamed up with Jeremy Gothrop from Woodstone and the Roots and Jeremy is just an amazing He's just an amazing guy in general, and he and David are working on a really uh, curated menu for this deli, and it's the kind of deli where everyone's going to feel comfortable, everyone's going to feel at home coming and eating at this deli, and uh, more importantly than that, it's going to be truly affordable, so no matter who comes to that deli, whether they have a ton of money in their pocket or, or very, or lent, like I do right now in my pocket, but it's just because of the pants I'm wearing. But anyway, the bottom line is the, the food will be sold at cost. So there will be no increase in pricing. So, you know, you might literally be able to get a cup of soup for a dollar. Uh, you could probably get a sandwich for a couple of bucks. Everything's going to be at cost. And David explains it so perfectly on the podcast. You got to check it out. And and then to see the, the donations from the McElroy family, the donations from the Hunt Family Foundation, uh, the donations from Ivan Crossland, from Crossland Construction, and just 
it, the list goes on and on. And so it when you see this space, you're going to be blown away. I, I just want to encourage you, if any of you have ever been to the Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C., well, tell me when you go there and visit the children's portion of the library if that doesn't remind you of the air and space museum with these soaring high ceilings and airplanes suspended and hanging from the ceilings and they're not going to fall on you they're all perfectly secure um i've got a picture or two on the show notes for this particular episode which is up there it's i am northwestarkansas.com slash 101 Check it out. You don't want to miss uh, what these guys have put together there at the Fayetteville Public Library. And so I just want to uh, encourage you to check out that particular episode. The other thing I did want to mention, and of course, I want to encourage folks. I got the news yesterday and I shared it out. And I was really excited to read about that is that... Um, that this it looks like uh, LinkedIn News did a story and they, they did a study of what does it take for a city to become a job magnet. And they did a study through their economics graph team and they looked at a bunch of cities around the United States. Well, guess who's number 11? Fayetteville. Big shout out to Fayetteville for making it to number 11. There's all kinds of cities on here. Seattle, Austin, Texas, Boston, San Francisco, Raleigh, Durham, Denver, Washington, D.C., Nashville, Richmond, Madison, Wisconsin, Fayetteville, Arkansas, Charlotte, North Carolina, North Carolina Provo, Utah, Pittsburgh, go to the Berg, and Chicago. They are all listed there as 15 of the um, the best places uh, to get work and find work. And so in the face of the chaos that we're experiencing in our current economy right now, everything that's going on with the pandemic, we can't forget that. These cities seem to be resilient. And it's just amazing that little old Fayetteville is part of that number. And so I'm excited to share that news. I would really encourage you to check out um, this uh, article from LinkedIn. I'll post it in the show notes. I'll also post it on our website so that you can check that out. But it's just really good news. And if you follow me on Instagram or Twitter or any of those, I post that stuff all the time throughout the week. So you don't have to wait till an episode comes out till we do a live stream like this. You can always see what's happening uh, or what's new in Northwest Arkansas. We're, we're trying to share as much of that as we can. There's so many other great programs out there that are doing the same thing. Fayetteville Flyer, of course, the Northwest Arkansas Democrat Gazette. I mean, there are just so many different venues and ways to get your news, even the regular nightly news. But we're here to support you as well and to share as much information with you as we can so that you can have a better perspective about what makes Northwest Arkansas Arkansas, such a great place. Now, two, two last things before I close this out. First, it is NFL uh, wildcard weekend. I don't know about you guys. I'm excited. For those of you that don't know, most of my family's from Pittsburgh, so I bleed black and gold. Go Steelers. I'm rooting for them. Uh, but I digress. I just think that it, this is an exciting weekend. There's three games tomorrow, three games on Sunday. So if you're watching this after the weekend, I'm sorry about that. Hopefully you had a chance to catch some of the football. And hopefully it goes off without a hitch that all the players are healthy and that they're able to play and compete. So I'm really excited about that. But yes, I'm an NFL fanboy unapologetically. And um, yeah, so I just wanted to mention that. And then finally, uh, the elephant in the room that I know that we've all been dealing with. And it's the one thing that I, I typically don't talk about on the podcast. I don't talk about politics. I don't talk about sex. And I don't talk about religion for the most part on this podcast. But I got to tell you that um, Wednesday was rough, as I know it would have been for a lot of you to witness what I witnessed. And um, I just want to encourage all of you as Americans that we can, we're better than this and we can get through this together, not by ourselves, not insulated, not you know one person by themselves. We have to do this together. It, it, we, we are a nation of people with a lot of differences. It's a multi, multiple, multivaried, 
a colorful tapestry of people that make up this great country. And we have to learn to live with each other. And I've said it before on the podcast. You know, my grandfather used to say, we'll either learn to live and work together or we'll die like dogs. And as rough as that sounds, that's the reality of where we are right now. And I'm not preaching to anybody. I'm just telling you what I see. It's just one dude's perspective on things. But I got to tell you, I see hope. And it's not because of a new administration. I just see that people's people are starting to realize exactly what's going on and what's happening. And so I really want to encourage you, um, if you want to see change, be that change. No matter what side of the aisle are you on, if you're hard right or hard left, you want to see change, you got to be that change and encourage each and every one of your fellow neighbors, fellow Americans to do, do the same thing. And so, again, I'm off my soapbox. I just wanted to mention it because it kind of feels kind of feels weird to act as if what happened on Wednesday didn't happen and just business as usual. Trust me, I saw it. I know you saw it. So I just want to encourage you that as a reminder, as a fellow citizen of this country, as a resident of the city of Fayetteville, as someone that lives in and loves Northwest Arkansas real dearly, we can get through this. I've got your back if you've got mine. So I just want to encourage you to, um, you know, be out. And thank you, Lisa, from the West Coast, checking on your brother here. I appreciate that. Thank you for uh, just, just popping in a note. And guys, whenever, just drop me a line. Let me know what you think. Please, um, if you don't already and you just happen to be watching this video, please uh, like I am Northwest Arkansas. Become a part of the I am Northwest Arkansas tribe. We're going to continue to advance. As I keep saying, we've got big things happening in 2021. We're expanding. I've hired some people to help me. I've got Chef Aaron Rowe from Ozark Culinary Tours that just wrote the most amazing blog post that I can't wait to share with you. There's a lot of new things happening. And oh, by the way, big shout out to Nate Walls from Secondhand Smoke Barbecue. He got the COVID. <coughs> and um, just be praying for him to get through it. I just reached out to him. I'm actually going to drop something off at his house right now. But for those of you that know, Nate Walls has not single-handedly, but he's one of many people that are meeting the needs of the food insecure in Northwest Arkansas. And he's dealing with COVID right now. So just keep him in your prayers. Um, reach out to him at Secondhand Smoke or Sep Second Helping um, NWA. And um, be sure to just tell him that you're thinking about him. Nate, we're thinking about you. We love you. And uh, we hope that you get get well soon, speedy recovery, and that everything is as it was originally, man. So uh, that's all I have to share this week. Again, I hope you guys have a great weekend. For those of you that are NFL football fans, this weekend, this Saturday and Sunday is as close to Nirvana as it's going to be with all the football that's there. But even if you aren't football fans, if you're worried about the next Razorback basketball game, they lost to Tennessee earlier this week, but we're, we know they're going to get back uh, on the good foot and uh, make something happen. Eric Musselman's got a great team and there's real hope for the future for all of sports uh, at the U of A up on the hill. So that's all I have for you guys right now. Thank you so much for tuning in. I can't tell you how much I appreciate you guys and I will see you soon. Remember, the podcast comes out every Monday, uh, Every Monday, that's when the podcast comes out. We're now in our second season. We got 100 episodes, and then we just dropped into our second season. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what, uh, what transpires in 2021. Good things, I hope, uh, more than anything else, not just for us, but for you guys as well. And Lisa hit it on the nail. Uh, go Steelers, and uh, I will see you guys soon. Peace and love.